This is Dave from the SHSAA office and I will be providing instruction on how to complete an E5 form. That's an eligibility form on XNet. Start by opening any web browser and in the URL type shsaa.ca. That will take you to the SHSAA homepage. Click on XNet. XNet will ask you for a username and password. Each school only has one username and password, and they are unique to the school. If you require this information, please contact your school principal. And if the school principal requires this information, they can contact the SHSAA office. Once you are logged into your school, click Registration, and then Activity Eligibility Form. The activity eligibility form must be completed prior to whichever comes first, the first competition that the team participates in, or prior to the eligibility due date for the specific activity. Please refer to the current SHSA calendar or website for the due dates. The reason for this is to ensure that the approved coach information has been submitted and that all students that are representing the school in inter-school competition are eligible to represent the school. It is a breach of SHSA bylaws for a school to use ineligible students in competition. On the left side of the page there is a list of activities that your school planned to participate in this year. The information is taken from the E3 or school team registration form that you completed in September. If you missed adding a particular activity by the E3 deadline in September because you weren't sure if your school was going to offer it, you will need to contact the SHSA office prior to the E5 date for that activity or prior to your first competition, whichever comes first, so that the team can be added to your E3 so that an E5 is available to complete. Any team fees that are incurred by adding an activity to your E3 will be invoiced to your school at this time and the yellow box in your E3 will be updated accordingly. Select the activity that you would like to complete the E5 for by clicking Create Eligibility Form on the right side of the page. If you don't see Create Eligibility Form, you will see Activity Deadline Passed. It means that the deadline has passed and you will need to contact the SHSA office to open the E5 for you so that you can complete it. You can click on Create Eligibility Form on the right side of the page beside the activity that you'd like to complete the E5 for. The first option you receive is the Opt-Up. If the school has applied for and been approved to reclassify to a higher classification, you can select the classification that they have been approved for. The form used to apply for reclassification is called the E1 form. It can be found by opening a new browser, typing shsa.ca in order to get to the SHSA homepage, and then scrolling down on two quick links on the right side of the page. Click on Forms and Due Dates, and your first form will be called the E1 Reclassification of Teams. At the bottom of that, you will see the PDF or a doc application form that you can fill out and send into the SHSA office. Getting back to the E5 form, your next option is to declare your intention to participate in SHSA playoffs. You select yes or no as to the intentions of the team to participate in SHSA playoffs. The SHSA office uses this information to create regionals and conferences in team activities. If the school has applied for and been approved for a joint sponsorship in this activity, you can click on the school that you are in a joint sponsorship with. If you are in a joint sponsorship with two or more schools, you will need to hold down the control button on your keyboard as you select the schools. Only select a secondary school if you are the primary school in a joint sponsorship. If your school is wanting to apply for a joint sponsorship in this activity, please contact the SHSA office to discuss. Next, you will need to complete the coach's information section. Fill in with the coach's name, the home phone number, work number, and email address. 
An accurate email address is important as this is how the SHSA office or hosts contact the coach with information regarding the SHSA playoffs that the team has registered for. Please also include any NCCP theory or technical certification that the coach has. This is important data to the SHSAA when they are reporting to SASK Sport. All SHSAA coaches are required to have a completed respect in sport and the online concussion awareness course. The coach will have received certification numbers when they completed the online courses. The certification numbers are mandatory fields for the E5 completion. If a non-faculty coach is the coach of this team, then a school supervisor can be listed with a name and a phone number. And then any other coaches, assistant coaches, managers, etc. need to be listed in the additional coaches section along with their respect in sport and their concussion certification numbers. Once again, this is valuable information for the SHSA when they report to SAS Sport, but it's also important for liability of the school and individuals that are coaching. Information regarding these courses can be found by opening a new browser and typing in shsa.ca in the URL to get you to the SHSA homepage. Once again, scroll down to Quick Links and you'll be able to find a link to Coach Education. And this is where you'll find all the information regarding the coach education that your coaches need to be able to coach a high school team. Getting back to the E5, you can now save your coach information now. The coaching information section cannot be changed on XNet following the withdrawal deadline of activities. If you need to withdraw a team from SHSA playoffs or update coaching information, please contact the SHSA office directly. Next, you'll need to add eligible students that are in grade 9 to 12 that are participating on the team to the roster. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, there is a button. You can click it to add and remove eligible students to this roster. This page lists the students that are currently in the database and eligible to participate on the team. You'll want to select those students that are participating on the team and then click the Save Roster Selections. If there are students participating on the team that are not currently in your school's database, click on Add Remove Eligible Student to this roster, then scroll to the bottom of the page where you can either click Add One Eligible Student to your school or Add Multiple Students to your school. You will require the student's unique SASC learning number in order to add the student to your school's database. The student number can be found at the top of their transcript. Fill out the last name and the first name of the student, what gender they are, their date of birth, and what grade they are currently in, and what year they will be entering grade 10. And you can do this for the students that are participating in the team that aren't currently in your database. Gender, birth date, what year they're currently in and what year they entered grade 10. And at the bottom you can click on Save Student Information. You'll notice that if the student learning number of the student that you put in here is already in the database, you will not be able to add that student through XNet and you'll need to contact the SHSA office directly. 
So in order to save this second student's information, we'll just need to delete the first student's information because we're contacting the SHSA office to have that student added or look into it. And then we'll be able to scroll down and save the student information for the second student. In the example, one of the students that I was trying to add appeared to already be in the XNet database because he had the same student learning number that already exists in the database. There are two possible scenarios that this might occur. One is if the student's eligibility has timed out in XNet, meaning that he's used up all his eligibility. And the other is that it is possible that the student's eligibility is registered at a different school. If you feel that the student's eligibility is registered at a different school, you'll need to apply to have the student's eligibility transferred to your school. In order to do this, you open a browser and in the URL type shsa.ca to take you to the SHSA homepage and then scroll down on, on the right side underneath quick links, click on forms and due dates. Then on the right side of the page, scroll down until you get to the E17, which is student transfer. And below that, you'll see PDFs and docs that you'll need to fill out and submit to the SHSA office to apply for the student's eligibility to be transferred. If you feel that the student's eligibility has timed out in the XNet system, and you think that the student is still eligible according to the SHSA bylaws, you'll need to contact the SHSA office to provide documentation to receive a ruling on the student's eligibility. So once you've added all of the students into your database that will be participating on the team, you can go back into the E5 and make sure that you add those students to the roster that you just added to the database. Save roster selections. Then you'll be able to review the students that are on the roster and if you feel that it is complete you can save roster information. You can add eligible students to the E5 at any time prior to their first game that they participate in up to the provincial championship. Any errors in student information as it appears in XNet is a result of school input error and can only be corrected by the SHSA office. Please contact the SHSA office for further information and instructions if there are students in your school's database of eligible students with incorrect information. Homeschool students and distance learning students that are participating on a school team must have appropriate paperwork submitted to the SHSA office. To find the paperwork that is required, please open a web browser and in the URL type shsa.ca to take you to the SHSA homepage. Scroll down and on the right hand side of the page, click on forms and due dates. And then on the right side of the page, scroll down until you can get to the E18 Home Distance Learning School. And at the bottom, you'll see a PDF and doc that you can use to submit to the SHSA office. There is a minimum number of students that you are required to have listed on the E5 for any given activity. The minimum number of students can be found by clicking Home and scrolling to the bottom of the screen. This area also lists the important deadlines for each activity. If you are in a joint sponsorship, the primary school is responsible to register the team on the school's E3 and complete the E5, which will include the students that are registered at the primary school only. When you select the school that you are in the joint sponsorship with, an E5 will appear for the other school to complete, including only the students that are registered at their school that are participating on the team. Once the secondary school adds their students, the primary school will be able to see students from both schools on their E5. Grade 8 students are not eligible for SHSA activities except in specific activities when an application to use the Grade 8 student has been approved. Application to use the Grade 8 students can be found in the Forms and Due Dates section on the SHSA website. So once again, go to open a web browser, type shsa.ca in the URL, 
and then scroll down so that on the right side you can click on forms and due dates and then scroll down to see E2 use of grade 8 and then at the bottom there's a PDF and a doc that you can complete and submit to the SHSA office. These approved students are not added to the XNet database but rather you will receive a letter confirming their eligibility to represent the school in competition. A copy of that letter should be retained by the coach of the team. Schools are encouraged to offer gender-based teams in each activity. However, if a school does not offer the activity for one of the genders, a co-ed team can be applied for and will participate in the boys category for competitions. Applications can be requested by contacting the SHSA office. You would complete the E5 for the males that are registered with that team. Confirmation of the co-ed team will be sent from the SHSA office after appropriate forms are submitted, including the list of female students that will be participating. An email will be sent to the email that is listed on the school information section of XNet confirming that you have submitted the E5 form once you have completed it. If you have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to give us a call. We would be glad to help.